Hey Bubble folks, what's up? This is Damien from bubblehex.io. So, two days ago, I wrote a short article in my newsletter on how to implement really fast case insensitive search in Bubble without the use for any plugins. And I got a lot of emails to please do a video on it. And here we go. But first, why um, are we interested in having case insensitive search without any plugins? Um, so the reason is there's a lot of fussy search and search and autocomplete plugins in the Bubble uh, plugin store, but they have a few issues. And the main is these all run client side. So what this means, they run locally on your computer or laptop in your front end, so in your browser. And this means they're pretty much constrained when they search through data because first they need to download it and then store it locally. And then also they need to use your local computing power of your machine. And that's why they're usually pretty, pretty slow. And with the method I'm going to show you today, we can search directly in our backend and let Bubble's backend servers do the heavy lifting. And what we're going to build is a simple search for a messaging app where we have messages here. And I want to search by either message content or by the email of the counterpart of the message. So for example, I ser could search for the word finally, and we get this message here. Or let's say I could search for Archer as a conversation counterpart. And here we go. See, even here, it takes half a second to get a result, but it works pretty reliable, pretty fast. And also let's note how this is case insensitive. So for example, if I search for finally, I have a lower caps F here and it still finds this one. Okay, so how does this work? Let's first look at our database setup. So first we have conversations. So conversations is what you see here on the left. I have a conversation with Lana. This conversation has a bunch of messages. In the database, this is structured the way we have conversation. These conversations have conversation parts. So these are the participants of the conversation, which is usually the current user and some other user. And then we have messages. Messages have a message text and a parent conversation. So the conversation that they belong to, which means in here, this message, finally a messaging template that works, itself knows it's part of this conversation here. Okay, then I have this repeating group up here that shows all the messages as long as my search input is empty. But as soon as I start typing, I actually get an other repeating group. Actually, let's, let's search for something real here. I get an other repeating group here, which is down here. This is set to be not visible on page load, but as soon as my input search, this, this one up here, has a value that is not empty, it's going to be visible, and this one here is going to be hidden. And then, in a repeating group down here, we do a search, which is search for messages, which is filtered based on our value up here. And that's the main topic that we're going to talk about today. So let me just get rid of all of this, and then we're going to build it out again. So the first thing that I want to do in here is I'm going to search for all the messages in our database. So search for all the messages, and then we can first filter them by whether or not they're related to the current user. So as said, messages themselves have a parent conversation and this parent conversation has conversation parts and I want all the messages that have a parent conversation that have conversation parts where the current user is part of this list. Okay. Go back, search for messages, constraint. I want the parent conversation being part of, so is in, and I'm going to search for conversation where the conversation parts contains the current user. Okay. Let's look again what we're doing. We're searching for all the messages in our database. And then we're going to filter them by first searching for conversations. 
that are conversations that belong to our current user and then saying, we only want to see messages where the parent conversation is part of this list of conversation that we just searched for. Okay. This gives us all the messages that are somehow related to the current user. And now in the second step, we want to again, filter these by, by whatever we put into our search input up here. So I can go here, I'm going to filter this and I'm going to use an advanced filter that lets us input some conditions to filter all these messages. So and I'm going to put in a constraint that says from all the messages that we find that are related to our current user, I want the ones where this message is message text. And then let's convert this to uppercase. That's important because for example, in here, if I search for finally, so let's see what I'm writing up here. If we just use bubbles filters as they are, the word finally is not the same as the word finally, which is not the same as the word finally. So what we're doing is we do everything uppercase. So finally with a small cap F becomes finally all in large. And also the word finally with a large cap F becomes all large cap. And this is all the same and we compare these. So this message message text in uppercase should contain. And what I want to have now is this value from our input also in uppercase, but this unfortunately doesn't work directly in bubble. So I couldn't, I can't go and say input search messages value. There's no uppercase option, but we have arbitrary text method in bubble. So I'm just going to delete this. So uppercase contains an arbitrary text, but this arbitrary text in our case should be the input search messages value all in uppercase. Okay. Again, we search for all the messages that we have in our system. We filter them by being related to our current user using the parent conversation. And then we filter it by saying the message text in uppercase should contain whatever is in this search box in uppercase using the arbitrary text method. So by doing this, now we should be able to search for message content, but not yet for user email addresses. So let's try this. I'm going to search for finally. Okay. This works. I can also search for another word. Let's say I'm going to search for what's up. Okay. We find this message that also works. I can't yet search for, let's say Archer. That doesn't work. Okay. But let's go back here and let's uh, build our filter out a bit more. So we search for the message text contains whatever's in this input field. Or I can add an or condition here or say this message. Okay. Or I could say, or this message creator email address, uppercase contains, and then we use the same arbitrary text again, input search messages value all in uppercase. Okay. Or, or I can, so use the creator's email, or I can say this message recipient email. I actually didn't talk about this yet, but in my messages, there is also a recipient email that I'm storing here just for search purposes. Whenever a new message is created. Okay. Let's go back. Yeah, or this message recipient email again, uppercase. And let's again use arbitrary text. Input search messages, value, and let's not forget the uppercase. Okay. Let's see how this works. 
So I can still search for message content. Let's say I'm going to search for hello. Okay, I get this message. Let's say I'm going to search for Lana. I get all the messages that somehow come from Lana or are to Lana. And I can also search for, let's say, Archer. And so on. Okay, so let's quickly recap how this search works. First, we search for all the messages in our database. Then we filter them by saying, hey, the message's parent group conversations should be a part of a set, which we get by searching for conversations where the conversation parts contains the current user. So we get all the messages that are somehow related to our current user. And then we filter them by saying, out of this subset, we only want to have the messages where the message text, all in uppercase, contains what is ever in the search field, also in uppercase. And for this, we need to use the arbitrary text method and attach this uppercase here. And then we have two more conditions that we separate with or. So it's either the message content or it's the creator email or it's the recipient email. Okay, that's how you can build in case insensitive search in Bubble. I hope that's useful for you and looking forward to seeing you soon. Bye.